We all know that Nintendo is a pretty litigious company. They're known for suing anyone for coming even close to their IPs. Tons of fan games and mods have been completely nuked by Nintendo's lawyers. Hell, they'd probably burst through the door of your Nan's house just to serve her papers for owning an unlicensed Mario t-shirt. Which is why I'm a little surprised that Palworld hasn't been absolutely annihilated by Nintendo's legal team. Don't get me wrong, it's a good thing that the pretty on-the-nose Pokemon parody exists, as it takes a lot more risks than any game I've played since the Game Boy. Palworld launched into early access last Friday and has since shocked everyone by its brutal depiction of Pokemon. A common phrase I see people say is Pokemon with guns, and yeah, it's kind of that, but it's also a lot more. Palworld is an open world survival game with its own spin on Pokemon called Pals. The game is still open access, and based on its version number, there's still a lot left to add and optimize. But the main gameplay revolves around foraging for supplies to build your own base. You can craft pal balls that you use to, of course, catch a wild pal. Combat is really where this game differs from anything in Pokemon, and it was evident as soon as I went to catch my first pal. Since I had no pal to fight for me, I just had to beat the living shit out of this cute little Pokemon myself in order to bring its HP down low enough for me to catch it. The closer their HP is to zero, the better your chances of catching it. You gotta be careful though, cause once their HP goes down to zero, they pass out and you won't be able to catch them. A huge aspect of pal world right now is its base mechanic. At the start, you build a crafting table, a PC, and some basic lodging for you and your pals that you have deployed at your base. Using the PC, you can manage what pals are in your party, resting in the PC, or put to work on your base. The pals in your party can be used in a similar way to Pokemon Legends Arceus, where you can throw their pal ball out to attack or mine a resource for you. It's pretty cool. But what's even cooler is how you can manage your pals that you have deployed at your base. You can pretty much enslave them into doing whatever you want. In the beginning, the stuff you can get them to do is pretty basic. They can mine resources and bring them back to the chest you've built, you can get them to farm, kindle fires, build and craft items for you, and a lot more. Of course, each pal has their own type and work suitability, meaning depending mainly on their type, they'll be able to do certain tasks. For example, fire types can keep a campfire lit, or a grass type can plant berries, but a water type is required to keep them watered. Only some pals are capable of chopping lumber or mining. It really distinguishes each type of pal and makes them a lot more unique. As far as progression goes, there's a lot of different avenues to progress in this game already. There's a fleshed out tech tree that lets you unlock different structures, facilities, workbenches, weapons, and more, and from there you can build a base by unlocking and building a PC. Once you have a PC, you'll be given missions to upgrade your base, and those missions usually revolve around unlocking and building specific base amenities like beds, workbenches, berry gardens, stuff like that. One thing that's really cool about the whole base system is how you can deploy your pals to make things like gardening, mining, chopping wood completely automated by them. This is pretty cool because honestly, doing it myself is boring as shit. This is like a mobile game. Like... <laughs> I feel like one big complaint I have is how much time it takes to craft things or mine yourself. I know it's pretty much a feature that all survival games have, but honestly in this game it feels a lot slower. And I think it's cause the game wants us to use our pals to speed up the process. You can also upgrade your build speed, so I imagine this would be less of an issue as you progress through the game. As far as base building goes, the amount of content they have here already is pretty impressive. Building the walls, floors, and roofs of building is all pretty basic, but hey, it works. Another thing this game could improve on, however, is the pathing of the pals that you have deployed around your base. Oftentimes they'll get stuck in or on a structure you've built, and I've also seen them teleport seemingly at random, so yeah, they could improve their pathing a bit when they're idle and have no work to do. On top of the base building survival elements akin to games like Ark, of course there's the whole Pokemon or PAL system, and it also works how you'd expect. You can catch any wild PAL if you bring their HP down enough and toss a PAL ball at them. You can have 6 PALs on your party and it works pretty much just like Pokemon. You toss out and return 1 PAL at a time to attack wild PALs or collect resources for you. Each time you beat a wild pal or collect something, your entire party will get an even amount of XP as a reward. Pals do have special abilities as well. For example, most fire types have a passive ability that keeps you warm when it's cold. Pals also have special combat abilities that they unlock as they level up, and yes, some pals can eventually be upgraded to use guns, which is kind of a tiny part of the gameplay really, but it's why everyone's calling it Pokemon with guns. Of course, eventually you'll unlock guns for yourself, and yes, you can shoot the pals in this game. <laughs> Which brings me to a point of contention I've seen a lot of people have with this game. I found this pretty dramatic PC Gamer article highlighting what people are upset about. At the end of the day, this is a game where you hurt, capture, and enslave innocent wild animals. But guess what? So is Pokemon. Yes, this game takes it to a whole new level, allowing us to make our pals indentured workers at our base. But at the end of the day, I don't see why this would be so bad. I mean, it's not really even that violent. Wild pals will faint when you defeat them, either with another Pokemon, a weapon, or even a gun. 
done. <laughs> Here's a quote from that PC Gamer article. Palworld is asking, what if you could mangle Pokemon beneath the inevitable, crushing weight of industry? It's not tongue-in-cheek, it's mid-2000s new ground edgelord. This dude fucking hated this game, man. <laughs> but I don't really understand it. Yes, it's a bit tongue-in-cheek with how the Pokemon are being used as a labor force, but I can't really say the game revolves around crushing them under the weight of industry. If anything, the game punishes you for overworking your pals. Pals who work at your base do have stress levels that have to be managed, or they won't work, or they'll be way less productive. They have needs that you're incentivized to give them. All in all, I don't think this game is trying to be edgy, I just think it's giving us a more grounded approach to Pokemon mixed with survival. I think this game could really improve over its development cycle and have a lot more content. As far as things there are to do, apart from the survival elements, there's not much. There are dungeons that have boss Pokemon that you can catch, which is cool, but dungeons are so confusing to navigate that it gets kind of annoying at a point. There's also special trainer battles that you can attempt at the towers that you can find by exploring this pretty huge map. You can use mounts to get around, but walking also isn't too bad thanks to the fast travel checkpoints around the map. I haven't played the multiplayer co-op mode yet, but if you have, let me know in the comments how it plays. This game blew up when it launched, and it makes sense. The game has so much potential, even in its current state. I can't wait to see how this game looks once the devs have added more pals, dungeons, towns hopefully, and more. It's on Game Pass, so I'm sure a lot of people have tried this already, but if you haven't, I'd definitely say it's worth its price. Let me know what you think about this game. That's about all from me. Thanks for watching. See ya.